Hi everybody, I am that nursing prep and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the second part of perioperative nursing, intraoperative nursing. So intraoperative is when we're actually in the OR during the surgery. And so what are the things that the nurse has to do? It kind of depends on what nurse you are. So we have the circulating nurse and we have the scrub nurse. So they have different responsibilities. So let's go through them. The circulating nurse, her job involves positioning of the patient, so getting them positioned on the table, making sure they have their safety straps on and warm blankets to cover them up, making sure that the grounding pad is on. Medication administration, so we may have to give some meds during the operation or anesthesia might want to take charge of that, so it kind of depends on what kind of surgery they're having. Making sure they have their SCDs, their sequential compression devices. Those are the things that goes on their legs and kind of squeezes them to help prevent blood clots, especially if this is going to be a really long surgery that's multiple hours long. They're at high risk for developing a blood clot, so it's really important to make sure that they have their SCDs on and working. If applicable, our job as a circulating nurse would be to collect specimens. We're going to be doing instrument and dressing counts. So as they're being used, as they're done, we're going to start uh, counting to make sure that we're not missing anything or that they you know, didn't leave anything inside the patient. So counting sponges, laps, and instruments used. Educating the patient if they're awake. So depending on what kind of anesthesia they have, which we'll talk about here in a minute, depending on what kind of anesthesia they have, they may or may not be conscious. If they are unconscious, then we don't really have to do this part, right? Uh, but if they are, then we're going to uh, let them know what's going on and what's happening and answer any questions they may have. Providing warming devices. So those could be something as simple as a warm blanket. We want to prevent intraoperative hypothermia of the patient. ORs are cold, they're cold for a reason, but we don't want the patient to get a little too cold. And ideally, we start the warming devices 30 minutes prior to the procedure even starting. In a perfect world, we do that. But having warming devices ready and on hand to prevent the patient from getting too cold is really important. Charting, of course, we're going to be doing all the charting. Okay, so everything we do or everything that gets done, our counts, when we place the SEDs, if we do a specimen, all this kind of stuff, we have to chart all of it. Asking about allergies. So depending on what's going on, you might be the same nurse that was pre-op that asked about allergies, or you might be a different nurse, okay? So this patient is new to you. You probably got allergies in report from the pre-op nurse, but just in case, you always want to double check about allergies before they become unconscious, before the procedure starts. And then finally, giving the updates to the family. Especially if it's a long surgery, it's gonna take multiple hours. You need to be the one that goes out or sends somebody out to go ahead and let the family know like everything's going well, it's taking a little bit longer than expected, or expect them to be out here in a couple hours, ask and answer any questions they have, that kind of stuff. So giving updates to the family. As the circulating nurse, you're going to be the person that's not sterile in the OR. So anything that requires you to be unsterile, like leaving the room, picking up something that's not sterile, calling somebody on the phone to ask about something for the doctor or responding to a doctor's page or something like that, you're going to be the one that does that because you're the one that's not sterile. The scrub nurse, she's the one, or he, is the one that is sterile. Okay, so they're the one that's kind of stuck. <laughs> they're kind of stuck in the OR next to the doctor. Their job is to hand all of the things to the doctor. So in order to do that, they need to be very familiar with the procedure or surgery that's happening and all of the appropriate instruments and supplies involved. And then they're gonna be doing the counts with the circulating nurse. So this is something you guys do together. So for example, at the end of a surgery and they're starting to count the laps, you know, the sponges to make sure they didn't leave anything in the patient, they're going to verify with each other. So the scrub nurse will say, okay, I have one, two, three, four, five. And the circulating nurse will say, yes, one, two, three, four, five. And then you sign it off. She can't sign it off because she's sterile, but she will later. The circulating nurse is the one who has to chart all of that. And then finally, the time out. The timeout is done by the doctor and or one of these nurses, 
Okay, so the timeout is what we do before any procedure, major or minor, elective or emergent, it doesn't matter what it is, it's something we have to do before every procedure. And that is, we have to make sure that we have the right patient, that we have the right site, and that we're doing the right procedure. This is very important because I'm sure you've heard those scary stories about somebody going in and they got their appendix taken out when really they were supposed to get, you know, um, their leg amputated. Or they amputated the left leg when they were supposed to amputate the right leg. Like terrible, terrible mistakes like that. So in order to prevent those, we do the timeout. So making sure this is the right patient, we are working on the right site, and we are doing the right surgery for that patient. I also wanted to talk in this video about the different types of anesthesia. So let's go do that. Now let's review the different types of anesthesia used in the intraoperative phase. So general anesthesia, this is probably what we think of when we think of a surgery, is that people get general anesthesia where they become unconscious. So in general anesthesia, there is a loss of consciousness. You have a loss of all sensations and reflexes, including your gag and blink reflexes. Amnesia is produced by the medications, which is actually kind of a good thing because you don't want the patient to remember the procedure. This can be given either IV or via inhalation. There are three phases of anesthesia. The induction phase is when we first start to give it, or anesthesia first starts to give it. The maintenance stage is throughout the rest of the surgery, depending on how long the surgery is. And then the emergence stage is when it starts to wear off and the patient starts to wake up. More and more, our anesthesia is shorter and shorter, which is a good thing because it's dangerous for the patient to be under anesthesia for a long period of time. So the emergence stage may start happening right before you're getting ready to transfer them to the PACU. It might happen in the OR these days, and that's okay. Regional anesthesia is when you lose sensation in a specific region of your body. This is injected into your spinal cord. So regional anesthesia, a big example is an epidural. When you give an epidural, you are still awake, right? You are not unconscious, and it doesn't affect your whole body. It affects from about your hips down. So that region, the lower part of your body, that region is under the anesthetic, not the rest of it. And it's called an epidural because it goes into the epidural space of your spinal cord. Another one they give is a spinal, which goes into the spinal space in your spinal cord. So that's regional anesthesia, so the patient is awake. And then local anesthesia is the loss of sensation at a desired site, so a specific area that they want to numb, like your arm or something like that, okay? So local doesn't affect your whole body, and you will be awake for it, and it'll be whatever site they're working on wherever you need your surgery. This is typically used in ambulatory surgery or what they call outpatient surgery, so day surgery. That's when they'll probably use local anesthetic. And then an honorable mention that I wanted to put on this chart is something called conscious sedation, okay? This is used for certain procedures like a colonoscopy or something like that, okay? And the point of this is to decrease the patient's level of consciousness. The number one most commonly used medication for this is something called Versed. And what that is, it's a short-acting sedative for the patient. So it's short-acting, they come out of it. A lot of times they're a little bit groggy and they like don't really remember what happened, but that's okay. So that's conscious sedation. So these are the three big ones you need to know. General, regional, and local, so be able to tell them apart. And in the next video, when I talk about post-op nursing, I'm going to talk about how the nurse's role is different and how these affect the patient differently in the PACU. So that was my video on intraoperative nursing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And any other questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.